What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Straight Facts. I got some facts to share with you. It appears that Donald Trump and his dipshit sidekick are in these media streets lying through their teeth. Donald Trump says he knows nothing about Project 2025. First of all, I have no idea what it is. I don't know what the hell it is. It's Project 25. I know nothing about Project 25. And his MAGA minion dipshit, J.D. Vance, is acting like he doesn't either, even though he wrote the foreword to the book of Kevin Roberts, who is the president of the organization that wrote Project 2025. Do they think we're stupid? I think they think their followers are stupid, but we're not. Here is Donald Trump's happy ass on a jet with the CEO of the Heritage Foundation, Kevin Roberts. Now, they're on their way to a conference for the Heritage Foundation for Donald Trump to praise Project 2025. Listen to what he says. It ties him into it 100%. Let's get it. Since Heritage was founded bigger than 1980, bigger than 1984, bigger than 1994, Kevin. Stop right there. These years tie Donald Trump forever to Project 2025. Can't run away from it. Why? See, at this conference, he's talking specifically about Kevin Roberts and the Heritage Foundation and what they have in store in the future. But he ties it to years that are very important that let you know he knew exactly what's coming down the pike for Project 2025. Let's start with the first thing he said, 1980. This guy right here, Paul Rayrick, wrote his own plan, very similar to Project 2025. Let's listen to it. And it doesn't matter, uh, you know, what kind of trade policy you have, uh, if in fact the moral fabric of the society has disintegrated. Weyrich commissioned a manifesto which describes in detail how a Christian elite will take power in America by waging an insurrectionist war. The manifesto is the purest distillation of Weyrich's ideas that we have. They felt that the political arena was inadequate. They weren't guaranteed of winning elections. And in fact, played by the rules, they would lose more and more elections unless they figured out some detours. The Council for National Policy and the folks who were coordinating their attempts to maintain control decided that they couldn't use the institutions. They needed to delegitimate and destroy them. Many of their publications say our goal is to bring down the federal government as we know it. I mean, what is this image? Trump is God's chaos candidate. What are they doing to the American flag? They're shredding it. Right? That's what's going on here. They're shredding it. So, yes, it's, it's been a, a declaration of internal warfare. Now that you know that 1980, he created this plan, what makes 1984 important and ties Trump even closer to Project 2025? Well, in 1984, the person running for president was Ronald Reagan. Sitting right next to Ronald Reagan is Paul Rayrick the mastermind behind the first plan in 1980. Here is how Reagan is attached to this plan and how Donald Trump knows it because he invokes 1984. Now you see this photo of Reagan and Ray Rick. What was so important about this photo and Donald Trump knowing what 1984 meant to the Heritage Foundation? Well, they used the church to try and get a powerful backing for Reagan and the Republicans. It was Ray Rick's plan that you saw earlier to get the Christians behind him and the Republicans to leverage the plan getting into place, which Reagan would agree upon. Ray Rick's deal was, I'll make you president and these pastors household names if you guys follow the plan in which I have for America, this war for everybody to become Christian. They agreed upon it and he went to work. Ray Rick had succeeded in harnessing the evangelical voting bloc. He had found his army, and it became the foundation of the modern Christian nationalist movement. Ronald Reagan in 1984 and Paul Rayrick were using pastors to try and push their plan to say, you guys have to be Republican. There's a video of a young black woman, she's older now, and how she became a Christian in one of these churches. When I was younger, there was an itinerant preacher who came through for revival. It was a... Sunday evening camp church meeting. So, you know, with the piano and the singing of the hymns, you know, think white 1950s. That's really literally what it felt like. We're listening to the Hellfire Brimstone preacher, and he's really getting to his point, which is, you know, you're going to go to hell if you don't accept Jesus. 
And my friend tapped me on the shoulder and she said, would you go up with me? We walked up the aisle and knelt down at the altar and Terry started to cry. I started to cry. I mean, both of us were just weeping. There was a very real, in a sense, welcoming home, a spiritual welcoming home. I was very, very soon after that handed a tract that told me that I had to vote for Reagan, even though I was only about 14 years old. <laughs> I wasn't going to be voting anytime soon, but I had to become a Republican in order to be a Christian. This propaganda that was sent to them told them they had to vote Reagan. Reagan knew about it. Ray Rick told him. The pastors knew about it. Ray Rick got him in on it. They knew about the entire plan, and so did Trump. See, right here is Ray Rick's plan 2.0. It's nothing new under the sun. They're trying to fool you guys like they fooled Christians back in the day with a plan to destroy what Christianity was really about to get what racist white people always wanted. Control, power over the people by any means necessary. So when Donald Trump evokes 1994, he's talking about the contract with America in which 367 Republicans agreed. Two of them did not. This was to be able to get power in the House of Representatives. It took them over about 40 years to do so. But with the Contract America, all of them coming together, they got what they wanted. It was like a six plan process that they had in the contract with America. And in that contract, they all had to sign it. And if they did not vote the way that the party thinks that it's supposed to go based on this contract, they agreed that they could be kicked out of Congress just for that. I mean, fuck the people who voted you in. It's like you have to have allegiance to us, the Republicans, outside of the Americans who voted for these Republicans. If you as a Republican had a different ideal and you liked this person because they promised you that's what they wanted. Well, when they signed the contract with the 367 Republicans, everything you wanted went out the fucking window. They didn't care. Whatever they decided to do, they all had to be in alignment, except for those two who didn't sign. You notice how... The Republicans always have these contracts with their Republicans because it worked before to help them get the house after 40 years of not being able to be in control. They know that telling their people fall in line is something that they do well. We joke, I joke all the time with my Democratic friends and say, uh, you know, Republicans fall in line, Democrats need to fall in love. That's, that's the joke, you know, amongst us in Washington about this. See, you always call Democrats sheep, but Democrats haven't signed any contract that says that they all have to vote the same fucking way. No, they fall in line after they look at policies and say, okay, I like it. Or they just go in and vote nay. But Republicans literally get their people to sign a contract that says you can be ousted if you don't vote along our plans. That's what the contract with America was all about. And it worked. Yeah, until it didn't. Because within that plan, it's the same policies that they're trying to pull now. Get rid of entitlement programs, right? Back then, it was welfare, you know, unemployment, uh, different types of entitlement programs that they didn't care so much about. Today, it's talking about getting rid of education. Mm-hmm and also health care and welfare and other entitlement programs that the government actually pays for in their eyes. Abortion, you know, all that. Trying to get rid of it. So they got the same policy as this contract with America, which failed because of those policies. It's like they never learn from their mistakes. They keep on making them, but they revise them so that you don't recognize them because you don't do the homework. Well, I'm just showing you the homework. Donald Trump just mentioned 1980, 1984, 1994, and I just tied them all to Project 2025. That's why Donald Trump evoking these years automatically ties him to the plan in which he orchestrated with his people because they didn't have a plan in 2016. And when they left, this man right here, Mr. Vought, or Vought, however you say his name, he is the one that was in Donald Trump's office that said he was going to write this on the end of Donald Trump's presidency for him, Donald Trump, in 2025. He's been at our organization. He's raised money for our organization. He's blessed it from the, you know, I remember walking into our last day in office and told him what I was going to do. So he's very supportive of what we do. And what you guys are seeing with Project 2025, the book, the whole 900 page thing, that's not even all. These people want to actually create their own deep state. Yeah, shadow groups within the government to do whatever this Russ vote wants to do. And Donald Trump 
knows about it. At least that's what he says. The guy who used to work for Donald Trump in his office. Yeah, that's a thing, people. This Russ vote wants to create a deep state. I thought they were against the deep state. But in reality, they've been making up the deep state just so they can create a deep state. Don't believe me. Listen to this dipshit speak. You know I brought the facts. What's my name? That's what I thought. I think you have to rehabilitate Christian nationalism. You have the largest deportation in history. Block funding for Planned Parenthood. I, I want to be the person who crushes the deep state. We are trying to create a, a, a shadow uh, Office of Management and Budget, a shadow National Security Council, and a shadow Office of Legal Counsel. Yeah. These are the main organs in government that you need outside mm -hmm. to create the battle plan. And you're not going to publish those? No. No. They go straight to Yeah, they're very, very close hold. I expect you to hear 10 more times from the rally the president, you know, distancing himself from the left's boogeyman of Project 2025. Yeah. Um, and you're not worried about that? I'm not worried about it. Okay. He's running against a brand. He is not running against any people. He has actually come up with a, a strategy that works so long as you are giving people like me in the government the ability to, to block funding for Planned Parenthood, block funding for fetal tissue research. But what I've told people is he had the most pro-life record ever. I've never seen him take it to stand in the way of a pro-life initiative that actually was real. You see how this ties Trump forever in history to Project 2025 and understanding exactly what the fuck he was doing and how him running away from it now has him afraid that he's going to lose and go to jail. So he has to run quick away from a plan that's been in the mix for decades upon decades. Now, they put it out for the public to see. Now that was a huge mistake because the world got to see it and they hate it. Only these Christians who are batshit crazy, not all Christians, but these MAGA Christians who are batshit crazy like this plan. And they thought all Christians in America would just have to deal with it. That brazen to believe that they had that much power and nobody else can do anything about it because they have the control of the future president. Donald Trump loves us. Fuck everybody else. Well, the world is spitting this shit up and they can't stand it. Donald Trump has to run fast away from it or he's going to lose. Even Kevin Roberts sees that it's a mistake to have put it out this early. He's holding back his book, which J.D. Vance wrote the forward. It ties that party to this plan 100%. America, it's up to you to do your job. Cast these weird people back where they belong. They're not true Christians. They've literally hijacked Christianity to do their evil. And we all know the person in the Bible, or at least the character in the Bible, they cloaked himself with God's words to destroy humankind. That would be the devil. What else would explain it? People pretending to be Christians to do evil to everyone but them. Yeah. Now, here's a video of Stephen Miller explaining that Donald Trump is not a part of this. Really? Let's listen to what he has to say and break it down. Project 2025 has absolutely nothing to do with the past, present, or future. President Trump and President Trump alone will make his own policies. Uh, my organization is not on the board of Project 2025. I've never advised nor consulted it. Stephen, I'll just finish the question. I'll give you time to answer it. Uh, I just want to say as well, in fairness, the photo there, which shows you uh, working with Heritage and the, the book is in the room. Uh, and so what do you say to people who see that history and think there was a link and now it is being walked away from because of the content of the controversy of those plans. I'm gonna have to call Stephen Miller tweaker because he does this tweaking thing whenever he's speaking and trying to be a confident liar. See, Donald Trump puts his hands out and gives you a clue that he's about to tell you a whopper of a lie. Stephen Miller straightens up and does this tweaking thing when he's about to give you his whopper of a lie. Well, here's the thing, guys. We can't stand liars, so fuck you. Keep the shit to yourself. Let your stupid minions believe in that galactically stupid shit. We're too smart for you. Take your weird ass to Weirdville and leave America the fuck alone. I speak facts. Straight facts. No chaser. Fuck your feelings.